Hey guys, we've been talking about face models a lot lately and in my videos I often make use of the face analysis tool, but I never actually explained how it works. So today we are going to do that and we'll also check a few more notes I bet you didn't know about. So here I have a very basic workflow that makes use of face ID and plus face to generate a person hopefully close to the reference. Remember that Face ID node now exports an image that is optimized for other face models that uh, need the image cropped very close to the face. So in this case, I feed this output directly to the plus face model. To help you evaluate the likeliness of this generation to the reference, I made the face embeds distance node. It works with inside face and dlib. If you can, I recommend using dlib as it's a much smaller model and completely free. Connect the generated image and your reference. Now the preview will have a small overlay at the bottom that tells us uh, how close we are. There are two numbers. The first is the row value. The second is normalized from zero to one. The closer to zero, the higher the likeliness. If you get one, it means that they are completely different people. In my experiments with current open source face models, we can expect a dist value of about 0.5. So what's the difference between the similarity metrics? I don't want to get too technical, but uh, very quickly. The images are converted into embeddings with a model trained with human faces. Embeds are basically just a series of numbers. Let's say that on a plane, point A represents our first embed and point B the second. To establish how close they are, I can simply connect the dots and thanks to Pythagoras, we get the Euclidean distance. This is very simple and effective, but it's reliable only if the two pictures have the same settings. For example, the same head position, expression, colors, etc. Another option is to get the cosine distance. I can connect the two points to the origin and calculate the amplitude of this angle. The closer the points, the smaller the angle, and so the closer our embeds will be. Now, in this specific example, choosing between Euclidean or cosine doesn't make much of a difference, uh, the result will be more or less the same. But what if I place the points this way? In this case, the Euclidean distance between A and B is pretty big, but the cosine actually very small. This means that the cosine distance might be a better option when there's a lot of difference between source image and generated image. For example, if your reference is a real person and the generation is like a painting or a drawing. Now, if I select cosine, you'll see that the distance will be closer because we don't consider the magnitude of the two vectors when assessing the similarity. L2 norm and Euclidean are technically the same thing, but with L2 norm, we do some normalization before checking the distance uh, that basically reduces the impact of the magnitude of the embeds you can consider it a midway between cosine and simple Euclidean. So to sum up, if the generated image has to be very close to the reference, Euclidean might be a good metric. If you want a bit more leeway, then use cosine. A good average is L2 norm, but uh, be warned because it will hurt your feelings. Now, there's a lot of confusion about what these numbers are or should be. You have to remember that face models deal with numbers, not with cognition, let alone beauty. Here I have two pictures of the same person. Uh, let's see what the distance is between them. Point 0.69. How can they be so distant? Well, they are very different images, uh, different head position, different makeup, different lightning. 
the model was able to tell that it's the same person because the value is below one, but it is also telling you that the person is in a completely different environment. If I take this other image, we will get a much closer result. And in this case, the composition of the two pictures is closer. And even if the lighting is different, uh, the model had a better time comparing the two faces. Let me show you another example. If I duplicate the same picture, I crop it to the center and I also flip it horizontally, you'd expect to see a value very close to zero. And instead we get 0.28, which is very good for L2 norm, but not zero. Again, uh, these two images create two distinct vectors. We are comparing numbers, not people. You can't expect to subtract two different numbers and get zero in return. That being said, this can still be a very useful tool for automated quality assessment. For example, I can let the workflow generate eight images and set filter best one. If I generate now, the model will make nine images and our node will pick the best one that can be used for further editing. Now, let me set the batch size to four and the metric to cosine. Our current distance is about 0.5, but uh, this is generated only over one reference image. Let me try to add another one and see if we can improve our score. If you remember, this picture was pretty distant from the other one, so I'm using instead uh, this one that is closer. If you have a low number or reference images, it's probably better to keep them close together. I need an image batch node and I can try to generate now. Indeed, we lowered the distance and we also got some nice uh, skin texture. Now, what if I average the embed before sending them to the model? They are very close pictures, so averaging them might result in better quality and indeed we improved the likeliness even more. Okay, as we've learned, every little variation on an image generates a slightly different embeds. This gave me an idea for the image random transform node. This node generates small variations over an image. I'm setting the seed to fixed, uh, repeat four and variation to point four. I can connect the image batch and check with a preview. The result is a series of images in different colors and sizes based on the reference. Basically, we are simulating various lightning and color conditions. It's a bit like cheating, but it sometimes works. I can now batch these variations together with the original images and send everything to the IP adapter. If I generate now, I should get a slightly better result. Yeah, we actually improved quite a bit. Uh, let me check L2 value. Yeah, 0.5 is pretty good. Now, if I zoom in the face, uh, it is a bit blurry and the eye is not very defined. You can, of course, apply a second pass or the face detailer of your choice but we've already loaded the dlib library so we can reuse that for the detailer stage all you need is a face bounding box node i connect the image and i'm setting a padding percent of 0.5 this will add some context around the face let me connect a preview to check the result okay perfect now i'm upscaling to 1024 I set the height to zero, Lanxos and keep proportion. I'm going real quick here because this is something we've done millions of times. I'm sending the face to the latent space, duplicate the case sampler, connect to the latent, set the denoise to 0.45 and change the seat. Then we need to decode, create a new face embed distance, connect the new image and check the result. If I generate now, I should get a nicely detailed portrait. Okay, the image is very nice, but we lost a little likeliness. To improve that, I can add a repeat latent batch node and repeat, let's say, six times. 
This way we will generate six images and the face analysis node will pick the best one for us. To improve even further, I'm also using a dedicated positive prompt. I duplicate the original one and change it to close up of a beautiful woman with perfect gray eyes. I'm also adding skin details. Nice, we are back on track. Now I need to bring back the face to the original size with an image resize. I convert width and height to inputs and connect them to the outputs of the bounding box node. Now we need to get the oval of the face and put it back over the original image. In the past I suggested to use segment anything or clip seg, uh, but we already have a face model loaded why waste resources loading more stuff? So I can use a phase segmentation node, connect it to the models we already have, uh, the image and check the mask and the cutout image. This is a rather powerful node as it can segment not only phase but uh, also the single elements. Uh, main features gets eyes, nose, mouth, eyes, uh, just the eyes and so on. There's one last option that is available only for Delib at the moment uh, that extracts uh, the full face including the forehead that is not always supported by segmentators. Okay, now I'm eroding the mask a little and increasing the feathering. Perfect, and I'm ready to put the face back. I need an image composite masked convert X and Y to input and connect them to the face bounding box XY outputs. The destination image is the original generation and the source the second pass. The mask is the result of the segmentation. We need a preview and I'm moving the first pass close here to see the difference. And finally we have a nicely detailed face with piercing blue eyes. Yeah, a lot better than the original. Okay, there's one more node that I want to show you. It's called Face Warp. It's basically a 2D transformation between two faces based on the key points generated by the face model. I need the models that we already loaded. As from, I take the first reference image and as target the generated image. Let me disable all the previews. Okay, if I generate now, you'll see that the main features of the original image are moved into the new one, taking care of color correction and size differences. Since the images are so close, I can also try to use the full face option. I'm reducing the mask a little too, and I'm setting a higher blur. Okay, now it's a bit better. Now I use this image for the second pass. I can lower the denoise and re-enable all the previews. And now we have a generation with the facial features that are copied directly from the original. If I put an embed distance here, the result should be very good. Yeah, we are well below 0.5. If I check the cosine distance, of course, the result will be basically the same person. So it's not as good as in Swapper, but it can be useful in certain scenarios. And if you use Dlib, it's completely open and free to use. Let me show you another example to understand better what is going on. I'm duplicating the reference and in the first one I take the Mona Lisa and in the second this girl here that has more or less the face in the same position. The images are both very small so I'm setting the grow to 0 and blur to 9. Ok, let's see. As you can see the node was able to rotate, scale and color match the face all with Dlib, which is just a 60 megabyte model and it's completely free. Adding a second pass of course would get rid of all the small defects, but again, this is just a 2D translation, don't expect miracles from it. Ok, last node before closing, it's super simple but it comes for free, so why not? It's called Face Align 
and it basically aligns a face to a reference. If I connect the two images, you'll see that the girl image will be rotated to match the position of the Mona Lisa. This can be useful because a face model usually work better when the face is uh, standing straight. So for example, if you have a person laying down, uh, you can rotate the face, apply a second pass and then rotate it back in the original position. Okay then, I hope you have a better understanding of how the face analysis nodes uh, work and how they can actually help you improve your workflow. That's all for today, see you next time, ciao!